Welcome back to my WordPress theme development series. In this video, we're going to talk about registering sidebars so we can put widgets within them. So if you think about sidebars, sidebars are pretty much locations, uh, very much like the navigational locations we set up for the menus. We basically set up sidebars and then we place the code referring to that sidebar wherever we want in our theme and then we can drag widgets into it. On the left hand side, if you go to appearance, we should see widgets here, but we don't. So we need to tell WordPress because we have our own theme that we want to be able to use widgets. So to do that, if you go into functions.php and you scroll down and we'll just put it underneath these options here, we just need to do add theme support and then widgets and close it off as well. Now, if we refresh, you should see that we have widgets available. And if we click into there, you'll see all of the available widgets that we currently have, which are standard WordPress ones. If you get, say, WooCommerce and you install it on here, you should see the WooCommerce widgets as well. Now, what typically you can do is drag the widgets into different areas, but those areas don't exist yet, and they are called sidebars. So let's go and create our first sidebar. We just need to go into functions.php, and I'll create a comment called register sidebars. And within there, let's do a function, and we'll call it my sidebars. And inside that function, we're gonna put some code, but I just don't wanna forget this like I always do. And we'll just add the action. And we're gonna add the action of widgets init, which is basically a hook that runs when WordPress loads and it checks what widgets are available and what sidebars are available. And then within that hook, we're going to add our function, which is my sidebars. Cool, so now we just need to put the logic in there. So within our register sidebars function, let's use a function called register sidebar. And within there, we just need to do an array and we'll put in an array of options. The first will be the name of the sidebar. So we will call it page sidebar. And then we will give it an ID and the ID typically is lowercase with separated by hyphens if you have spaces. So I'll just call it page sidebar to keep it simple. Then we need to determine the title. Uh, so the, the what is gonna be the title. So what you can do is before title and you can do H4, oops, H4 and maybe we'll give the class of widget title. So usually when you create a widget, you actually specify the title of the widget and this is how it does it. So we're creating the wrapper around the title. Then we'll do after title. Actually, we have to do underscore before and after, not hyphen. So before and after need to use underscores. There we go. And then we will just close off the H4. Making a lot of mistakes again today. So now if we hit save and we go and refresh, we should see our page sidebar come up. You could obviously copy this and you could do say blog sidebar and refresh. Now we have a page and a blog sidebar that was done earlier. Sorry about that. So now we can drag some stuff into there. Let's drag our archives into there. Uh, actually archives will go in the, in the blog and we'll call it, you know, uh, post archives can show the counts as well. Uh, categories as well, put that in the blog sidebar. Categories. And in the page sidebar, I guess we can just put a navigational menu and we can put our top header. We'll just put our top menu and we'll just call, call it um, website menu. And we'll also just put some custom HTML in there and we'll just do um, H6. Actually, no, we won't do that. We'll just do like, this is a test and then we'll just put some HTML in there. This is some test text. Cool. All right, so now we've saved all of our widgets. And if we go into our, say, our about us, uh, about us template or page, nothing comes up. We actually need to now call that sidebar within our template. So the about us template uses the page.php templ template. So what we can do is we can just go inside of our template or page.php template and do php if is active sidebar. So basically if there is an active sidebar with the ID of page sidebar, 
which we were referring to this one. Then let's just close it off as well. Within there, we can do PHP dynamic sidebar page sidebar. So that function calls the sidebar with the name page sidebar. So we'll save that and we will refresh. And now you should see that our widgets that we put in that specific page sidebar come up. So let's just maybe pretty this up. I'll give it a section of row of row. This is bootstrap styling, by the way. Then we'll do div col lg3. And we'll put that inside of there. And then we'll do div class col lg9. And close that off as well. So now we're going to have a left sidebar with the page side sidebar within there. There we go. So you can just go into your page sidebar and add some other stuff in there if you wanted. And we'll just say recent posts here. Refresh it. There you go. You have to style it, obviously. So to style it, you'll just need to inspect the element. And as you can see, the H4 has a class of widget title. So you could change it to H3 if you wanted or anything else you wanted to. You could add as many styles as you wanted to as well. So I'll change it to H3 for now. We'll refresh it and you'll notice it's automatically changed to H3. It's got the class of widget title and uh, the actual whole widget itself has two classes. One which is just widget, which applies to all of your widgets. And then one is widget underscore recent underscore entries, which is for that specific widget. So when you're targeting them in CSS, you just need to, to find them. I did kind of fix it up slightly whilst I was testing, which I should have removed, but I just went in and added this style. So the widget style, and that kind of made it look a bit better. So if you, if you take it away, it looks like that. So you could just style, style the widgets and then it will affect all of the widgets. So with that being said, you could go into your blog. And if you remember, our blog used the archive.php. It was using the category dash blog PHP, but I actually deleted that. So we're just using the archive.php and let's just copy over this and put it within our archive. And then I'll do div col LG nine again. You don't have to use bootstrap if you don't want to, but I just find it easier and then we'll close off the section. Cool. And we need to change this to blog sidebar. And let's go now and refresh that. And you should see now we have our archives for our blog. You can obviously do this in every single template that you'd like to. Uh, so that is pretty much it with sidebars. Now, when you create a, there are two, two different things. You have a sidebar and then you have a widget, of course. So the widgets are these things here. Now to create a widget, it's a bit more complex and I'm not going to explain it in this video. I will save that for later down the track. Once we've completed this series, I might add some extra advanced episodes that cover some more advanced stuff. So if you stick with me in the next couple of videos, we are going to learn about custom post types. So for example, if you wanted to create your own catalog with images and uh, you know descriptions and say if you're going to have like sell cars on your website or a real estate website, uh, we're going to learn how to do that in WordPress itself. And then later down the track, I'm going to show you a couple of plugins that I use every single day religiously whenever I build a website. Um, I try my best to stay away from plugins, but I will explain to you all the excellent ones that are worth uh, buying. Um, and then towards the end, I'm going to show you how to make the website live. So show you how to actually upload it onto your own server. Uh, but we still have a bit of a bit more stuff to learn. So let's uh, let's get going. And in the next video, we will learn about how to integrate search into our theme. See you then.